Today in this lecture we are going to discuss control of blood flow through the skeletal muscles. Basically we are going to discuss the factors which uh, control the blood flow through skeletal muscles. There are two main factors which influence the blood flow through the skeletal muscles and they are the local factors and the nervous system. Now we have started our new chapter about the muscle blood flow and cardiac output during exercise, coronary circulation and ischemic heart disease. And in the first uh, lecture of this chapter, we have discussed the normal blood flow of the skeletal muscles and the increase in blood flow that occurs during exercise. Now we are going to focus on the control of blood flow the control of blood flow, the control mechanisms which will either increase or decrease the blood flow through the skeletal muscles. Now the main factors, the main factors which regulate the blood flow through the skeletal muscles are the local factors or the local regulatory mechanisms and the nervous system control. Now whenever, whenever a muscle, the demand of a muscle starts increasing for example a person starts exercise the demand of this muscle cells for oxygen and other factors other nutrients will increase this leads to this leads to some uh, secretion of some substances which will locally at this level will increase the amount of blood flow to this muscle now the most important factor the most important factor that will increase that will increase the blood flow to the muscle is oxygen for example this muscle is actively being used in the exercise so the oxygen concentration here will fall as soon as the oxygen concentration falls here the 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 muscles in the blood vessels the muscles in the blood vessels the smooth muscles in the blood vessels they will not be able to maintain their contraction so the decrease in oxygen in the muscle cells will lead to vasodilation now this vessel this small blood vessel has dilated it has increased in size so the amount of blood flow has like increased so many times so decrease in oxygen concentration in the exercise in in the exercising muscle is one of the most important factor which leads to vasodilation and this uh, vasodilation this increase in size increase in size or increase in the caliber of the blood vessels which are bringing blood to the muscle it may be due to direct effect of oxygen because the muscles in the blood vessels are not getting enough oxygen to maintain constriction so they get dilated or it can be indirectly through the secretion of adenosine now this adenosine is very much important for maintaining vasodilation now if the if the muscle continue to be uh, continues to be used in the exercise or this uh, muscle remain in the exercise for a long time then adenosine will not be able to maintain vasodilation alone or it will not be able to maintain or fulfill the needs of this exercising muscle all alone. So other factors also come into play and the most important factors which have been so far studied include the potassi potassium ions, ATP adenosine triphosphate, lactic acid and carbon dioxide these factors these factors also help in increasing the blood flow to the exercising or the active muscles now these are basically local factors or this regulation this increase in blood flow this increase in blood flow due to the increased demand due to the increased demand of the muscle is a local factor it is a local regulation because all the changes the decrease in oxygen is occurring at the level of the muscle. The secretion of adenosine is occurring at the level of uh, a muscle. Similarly, secretion of extra potassium ion, formation of ATP, formation of lactic acid and formation of carbon dioxide. All these things which are causing vasodilation which is helping in more blood towards the muscle 
all these changes are occurring locally in the muscle so they are the oxygen adenosine potassium atp lactic acid and carbon dioxide all these are considered as the local factors or they play their role in the blood flow regulation uh, the local regulation of blood flow local regulation of blood flow now apart from the local regulation of blood flow the nervous system also play the its role in regulation of blood flow now the local factors the local factors are playing their role in increasing in increasing the blood flow to the muscle sometimes we need to decrease the blood flow to the muscles we need to constrict the blood flow to the muscle so that blood can be diverted to the places where it is more needed so there is another factor which is the nervous system or the nervous control suppose for example here is the brain and here is the spinal cord some nerves are also coming to the blood vessels from directly from the brain or from the spinal cord and the most important nerves the most important nerves they that play their role in the control of blood flow through the skeletal muscles are sympathetic vasoconstrictor nerves sympathetic vasoconstrictor nerve these nerves these vasoconstrictor nerve they secrete norepinephrine they secrete norepinephrine at this level and norepinephrine norepinephrine is basically a vasoconstrictor it is a vasoconstrictor and it helps it helps in constriction of the blood vessels or decreasing or decreasing the amount of blood that is coming to the muscles so when for example the a person is in condition of shock a person is condition of shock or the the bp has fallen due to any reason in such conditions especially in shock the nervous system get activated the nervous system gets activated and specifically the sympathetic vasoconstrictor nerves they send signals with the help of norepinephrine and they constrict the, these blood vessels they constrict these blood vessels and these blood vessels the dilated blood vessels or the normal blood vessel they get constricted like this initially with the local factors during exercise when there was demand of more blood flow these factors oxygen oxygen adenosine potassium atp they these factors basically dilated they dilated the vessels but norepinephrine is basically constricting it is basically constricting the blood vessels so that blood flow to the muscles the muscles or the blood flow to those areas where it is not needed it is decreased so that the blood flow is decreased to the muscles and more blood more blood can be diverted to the brain during shock so this is basically nervous control and the other control system is basically the local regulatory control system so that's all about the control of blood flow through the uh, skeletal muscles and there are two main mechanisms which control the blood flow through the skeletal muscles one is the local fact, uh, local regulation of the blood flow and local regulation is active at the level of muscles and it is more active during exercise when the demand of oxygen and other nutrients increases or the demand of muscle during exercise increases so these factors which basically include the oxygen the deficiency of oxygen secretion of or increase in the formation of adenosine potassium atp lactic acid and carbon dioxide formation they lead to vasodilation they dilate the blood vessel they increase the size or the width of the blood vessels and a, a larger vessel is able to supply more blood to the muscle and that will be able to fulfill the needs or the demands of the muscle the nervous control the nervous control of the uh, blood flow uh, through the skeletal muscles is basically with the help of sympathetic vasoconstrictor nerves and these nerves basically secrete norepinephrine and they get uh, mostly active during shock 
or the 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 purpose is to constrict the blood flow to the muscles where the blood is not needed in the conditions of shock and to divert more blood towards the brain now this norepinephrine is also secreted from the adrenal adrenal glands where basically the adrenal from the adrenal, adrenal gland they directly glow, go, go into the blood and directly come and act here while through the nervous system they the nervous system acts basically with the help of sympathetic vasoconstrictor nerves and where at the end of these nerves this norepinephrine is secreted it constrict the blood vessels during shock and basically helps in diverting the more blood towards the parts where it is needed now another important thing is which we will discuss in uh, the coming lecture is that during sympathetic discharge during sympathetic discharge or when there is sympathetic nerves activation some of the muscles may receive more blood some of the muscles may receive more blood especially those muscles which are actively involved or which are actively needed and some of the muscles may receive less blood especially those muscles which are not needed in uh, those specific conditions in which the sympathetic discharge has occurred or the sympathetic nervous system has been activated so that's all about the factors that control the blood flow through the skeletal muscles thanks a lot for watching the video